Sports bettors, what is going on? I got a cool video for you today. I'm gonna to talk about how I became a professional sports better, quit my job, retired my wife, got to where I do this full time, just studying games, watching sports, betting on sports for a living. And then I'm gonna go over my game plan to scale to a million dollars this football season. And I also wanted to show you the sick Airbnb I'm staying at. So I'm on the third story right now. Don't have time to show you the full place. You can see across the street there, there's a water park. All these cottages are part of the Margaritaville here in Panama City Beach, Florida. It just opened, so not all of these units are open. I'd assume most of the ones built are up and running. I don't really know how many are open, but I know the beachfront ones, there's only a few open and we've got one of them. So I'm on the third story right now. And the water park back there, completely empty. So I'm sure when I come back here, it's not gonna be empty like it was this time. You've got so many beds. This house is built to be like a party house, which stresses me out as an investor. I wouldn't wanna invest in something like this. Um, but I would love to live beachfront like this. And it's super motivating to stay in places like this. So you can see there's two bedrooms back here and they have beach views. Let's see if I can let you focus on that. Just looks fucking sick, boys. So awesome. I'm gonna open the um, open the door back here if I can. And we still got some shade out here. So I will chill out here. Maybe the rest of the video. A couple people cleaning the decks on both sides. Bad timing, but super cool. I'll go downstairs actually to the second floor where my wife and I were staying. So you go down the spiral staircase, there's three floors. We'll go to the second floor. I'll, I can also show you the uh, first floor, which is down here. So you've got that little pool right there. So you can chill in the pool. You don't have to leave uh, to chill in the pool. And then you just walk down to the beach. I did uh, paddle boarding in the ocean yesterday. Super clear water. It's fucking dope out here, man. But for sports betting, the reason I want to make this video real quick it's just there's so many fakes out there. There's so many people just making shit up. And it does bother me a little. I don't let it bother me. If somebody's gonna be dumb enough to get scammed, I say let them get scammed, let them learn a lesson. But it's crazy how many people are falling for the nonsense. And it blows my mind. I mean, these guys are pretending that they've been on sports for a living and they can't even sit on a podcast and explain what plus EV is and explain simple sports betting strategies. So it's completely bizarre. But for me personally, how I became profitable was I looked at these new apps and anytime a new app launches or a new sports book opens, their main focus is not actually profiting. And it sounds crazy that a business would open and not focus on profiting, but they know that their path to becoming a billion dollar business, like prize picks and underdog fantasy, they're valued at a billion dollars now. A couple years ago, they were just small companies, right? They're just startup tech companies. Well, their path to a billion is through acquiring new users. So they're not necessarily worried about people coming in and beating their game because they are just trying to grow, right? And even if I'm coming in and beating their game and making all this money, They've got hundreds of people losing, so it doesn't really bother them that much. It's not until they're established and they've been around for at least a few years, usually like five years, to where they say, okay, we have marketed to everyone. Everybody knows who we are. Let's focus on just profiting off of our users. And that's when you see like BetMGM and, you know, um, the household name sports books like in vegas their main focus is to profit off of you it's not to get new users they built vegas they know new they know new users are coming in every day um so what i do is i target those new startup companies and i find deficiencies in their game i find things where the rules are different on each platform slightly different as far as which props you can combine and which players you can combine a big one in baseball right now I just hit two plays yesterday, $20 to win 200 on both of them around give or take, you know, 50 bucks, but around there. And the reason I won was because I paired players on the same lineup that hit next to each other. So like a guy that bats first, second, and third in a lineup, I'll take all three of them over on runs plus RBIs. 
So the idea is if the leadoff guy scores a run, it's probably the third batter that's getting the RBI there. And if the offense can do good, they'll all go over. Or if the offense is bad, they'll all go under. So you pair those up, and what a traditional sportsbook would do is they would nerf the payout. But these startup apps, they don't have those capabilities yet, or they're just not aware of it. Maybe they don't have a lines maker telling them this stuff. So they're incredibly, incredibly beatable. And when they're beatable, that's when we win, right? And eventually they'll change their rules. Once they start seeing, holy cow, this guy's killing us, they'll change their rules. Like Sleeper Fantasy. I got on Sleeper Fantasy about a month ago and I crushed them. And then they changed their rules. They took a lot of their props away. Now what's interesting is their app is a lot less fun for the average degenerate to play on. So that's gonna hurt their business big time just because they're trying to avoid letting me win a little bit of profit, it's gonna hurt their business big time. So some of these apps will actually choose to say, hey, we'll let you profit, but we'll limit you. You can only bet $50 a play. No more betting $500 a play. Like we don't wanna pay you 10 grand a month. We'll pay you two grand a month. You can have fun, make a little bit of money, uh, but we wanna keep our game the same way it is. Even if it's beatable, they know 99% of people aren't smart, aren't smart enough or disciplined enough to beat them. So there's different routes these CEOs and these businesses can take, but a lot of them do change their game and it ends up hurting their business. You know, Thrive Fantasy used to have big payouts. They took their payouts down. Thrive Fantasy doesn't even offer that many props, but I still crush Thrive Fantasy. That's still one of, that's still my bread and butter is one of, one of my bread and butters is Thrive Fantasy. Um, right now we're crushing Chalkboard. Chalkboard just launched like a week ago. So of course, they're gonna get their stuff dialed in, but for now we can crush them. So what I'm saying is target these new startup companies that are more focused on growing their company than actually profiting. And they're easier to profit. And it's just, it kind of is common sense, guys. I mean, hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, drop a comment and I'll end up uh, answering your questions. I'm probably gonna go inside the living room here um, downstairs. My wife's taking a nap with her son but yeah, that's how I've been profitable. And now you might be saying, well, Cody, you're betting 20 bucks to win 200. What the hell is going on? That's not enough to retire your wife and be rich and make a million dollars. Well, I'm going to hammer prize picks this football season. $500 bets. Check it out. Super cool pool. $500 bets to win uh, 5,000 a lot of times. We've got a lot of those coming. So prize picks is gonna be crazy this year and I'm super excited about it. Prize picks is a big way that I'm gonna to get to a million dollars this year. Now the bigger way, the bigger way is through helping these companies grow. So I just said their main focus is growing and that's what allows me to profit. Now, if I'm profiting, I can then market their app, tell people like you to join and they're happy because they're getting new users. Now, I've thought about this a lot and I've wondered like, if I'm crushing it, do they really want my users? Because my users are gonna kick their ass too. And I think that what they've determined is, even if somebody is following me and I'm profiting, most of you guys watching this video don't have the discipline to just copy my plays and not make your own. So they know even if I'm crushing them and referring people to them, my followers are not all going to stay disciplined. Some of you will, and I hope if you're watching this, I hope you're one of them, but most people will watch me profit and they will still think in their brains that they can do it better. So if I refer them, all they have to do is copy me and they'll profit, but what they'll end up doing is they'll get greedy. They'll copy me for a day, make some money, and then I'll have a losing day and then they'll say, fuck that, I can do it myself. So I can refer people to these apps, make money from the apps. And then for my most loyal, for my most intelligent clients or followers, I can turn them into clients and they can pay me for VIP picks. Now I post a ton of picks for free. So when I'm saying people don't follow my plays, I'm talking about the free picks that I'm posting out. My VIP, if somebody's paying me for those picks, they're copying it. And my VIP clients, they come back each and every month because they are profiting. Some of them might go from losing 500 bucks a month to making two grand a month. And for them, that's worth paying me 
you know, I'm doing $500 for my full NFL season right now. So it's worth it to them. So three streams of income, right? Step one, you got to be a profitable sports better. You have to learn how to profit in this game. Step two, relationships with the apps. Relationships in a way where you say, hey, I'm a content creator. I'm not just kicking your ass. I'm making content. I can bring you guys new users. That's huge for me because I used to get banned and I'll just be fucked. They wouldn't want me. But now I get banned and I say, hey, I've got this whole group chat. I've got this YouTube channel. I've got this TikTok. So then they're like, all right, we'll let you kick our ass a little, but tell people about this promo code. And then number three is my most serious people, people who are really serious about sports betting for a living, having the VIP email subscription where I send out my personal place every day to an email group and they can copy it and they can profit with me. So those are the three streams of income. We're trying to get those to add up to a million throughout this football season. I'm super freaking excited about it, boys. You know, I should be able to do it. It's always nerve wracking this time of year because it's the calm before the storm. I know that it's like almost money time, um, but I'm just fired up. So if you're watching this, hit the subscribe button. I'll be betting. Even if you're watching this in a few years, I'll still be betting. I'll still be making a little bit of content. Um, but this is my this is my pop off here. This is my million dollar year. I'm so fired up and uh, really just wanted to share this beachfront property with you guys. Kind of talk about my goals for this upcoming football season and um, just inspire y'all. Because when I was coming up, when I was younger and I didn't have a bankroll and I didn't know how to bet profitably, like watching the guys on YouTube and Instagram that were sports betting motivated me a ton. Even some of the guys that were just pretending to be profitable. And those guys basically what they do is they make all their money selling picks. They don't profit at all and they don't get repeat clients, but they charge their clients so much for one pick that they just fucking rinse them clean. And if they do hit, they'll get the client to pay again. And then when they lose, their loss counts so much that it just wipes that person out. So they'll never come back, but they may have just charged that person 500 bucks three times. You see what I'm saying? So if you charge someone 500 bucks for one pick, and then you're in a fucking Rolls Royce and have a mansion, people will actually buy that and then they'll just rinse that person and then be done with them. And then if they complain, they'll block them. So you see it all the time. Go to Spencer Cornelia's uh, channel, Fake Sports Betting Guru Exposed. Just type that in on YouTube. You'll see a ton of them. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm hype. I'm pumped. And uh, appreciate you guys watching this video. Let me know what you think. I try to be as transparent as I possibly can. So if there's anything I didn't cover, I am down to break it down in the comment sections. Peace out. I'll see you later. Let's get freaking rich this football season, boys.